You likely know about volume automation, which lets me basically remote control my fader. So it does fader moves for me. I don't have to do them manually. So for example, this guitar part, uh, this riff right here can be a little bit louder. So I hear it over everything else. I can automate that fader to move on its own. Here's what that looks and sounds like. Neat, right? That's volume automation. You might hear people talk about riding the fader. That's it's riding the fader, so that is it is writing automation. If you're not a native English speaker, I apologize on behalf of our language. I don't know how you do any of it. Um, anyway, but th did you know that there's more that you can automate than just volume? I imagine most people automate volume. They maybe automate panning occasionally, but be careful with automating panning. Usually it sounds cute, um, but it's annoying for the listener, like the things moving around. That only feels cool to you. It doesn't feel cool to the listener. Anyway, sorry. Tiny rant. Um, but you can automate other things. Specifically, you can automate whatever parameters you want to inside of a plugin. Cautionary tale. Don't get lost in this. Don't go spend the next 16 hours in your studio automating everything just because you can, although it does sound kind of fun. Um, it can be a bit of a trap, but it can also be pretty cool. Let me show you what I mean. On this song here, there's a synth part that we came up with. We actually used, I think it was Mojito, to build this synth sound. Um, but once we had it, Tim, the drummer who wrote the part and played the keyboard part, kept saying, mm, it'd be cool if it had, if I could like ride the mod wheel on the keyboard. You know what I'm talking about where you can like, you push the mod wheel up and it goes or adds vibrato or adds anything you really want to. He wanted that idea, but wanted to do it after the fact. We'd already recorded it. This particular sound didn't have anything interesting when you automate the mod wheel, um, but we created it ourselves. So here's the part, just so you can hear it by itself. So what all he wanted was on those those high notes at the end, wanted them to have a little warble to them. Like a vibrato almost. And so I thought, well, I think I know how to do that. It's not technically vibrato, but I pulled in the X Trim plugin. Heard of it? This is one of my favorite plugins in Studio One, X Trim, because it's just a tremolo which is cool, but you can also flip it over to pan mode and it'll do, instead of tremolo up and down with volume, it'll go left to right with panning, which is super cool. Um, I'll have to show you that another time. I've got a video on it, I think. I think Gregor has one too, because it's really cool. You can also set it up to like do these crazy patterns and stuff. Anyway, uh, back to this. What I did here is I automated this depth knob on this tremolo. So the tremolo plugin is on, but we don't hear it until that gets turned up. And so if we hit A to show our automation line, you can see, looky here, look at this automation. So all I did was I put automation into touch mode and I plopped Tim down here, put his hand on this knob, clicked it, and then said, just click and drag when you want to turn this up. So and then pull it back down. That's it. And it recorded his movements, and now those movements are here. So here's what that sounds like. Super cool. Worked out super well. What's cool about this is you can always go in. You could just draw this in if you want. You don't have to manually move the knob. You could literally like grab the, what's it called? I never know the name of this thing. The draw tool, the paint tool. And you could literally just go like that and just draw it in. It's more fun to play it if you can. So he did it with his hands, which is delightful. Um, did a couple of passes, got it like he wanted it. And a couple of them, like this one, I'm pretty sure he didn't do this one well. So I just deleted it, and he's like, can you just copy the one over from before? And I was like, yeah. So you can copy and paste automation like this, and you can even like move it around to get it in the right spot um, without messing with the underlying audio, which is delightful. Um, so that's what we did, and now we were able to automate and have this cool little thing that adds a little... And just so you know, here's what the pan mode sounds like if you wanted to do panning instead of tremolo. We didn't do that on this song, 
uh, primarily because uh, my drummer can only hear out of one ear, and so he can't hear stereo. So that would have been sad for him. Uh, so we did tremolo instead. He probably wishes I hadn't told you that. Anyway, here's how it sounds like, and here's how it sounds in the mix. It's subtle because it's a big, dense mix, but you'll hear it just on those ends of those phrases. You'll hear this happening, which makes me happy. Neat. Obviously, you can go more, you can go less subtle, more obvious than that on your projects. But we we like to keep it a little bit subtle over here in the band. Um, and the cool thing is now, if I copy and paste that, that automation will come with it too, I believe. Let's test that theory. I've pasted this switch and look, see, automation stayed with it. That's lovely. So if you he, you, he only had to automate it once, and then we just copied and pasted it throughout the rest of the song. Neat. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope this was fun and helpful for you. Go make some music. Go automate some crazy parameter and then tell us how it went. Uh, my name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.